Hello everyone, hope you are doing great. In today's video, we are going to look into the shutter speed. Now, shutter speed, as we had discussed even in the previous video, is a very important factor of your exposure triangle. Because every time you are shooting on manual mode or aperture or shutter priority mode, uh, understanding of your shutter speed is very important. So let's look into that today. Today we are looking into the shutter speed and make sure you stay till the end. At the end of the video I have a bonus for you, a bonus tip uh, on how shutter speed can be varied and, and some of the motions can be captured. So stay till the end. Uh, also don't forget to subscribe the channel, make sure you hit the bell icon and get the notifications because these are some of the important tutorials and you don't want to miss them. Last video if you remember we discussed the exposure triangle and if you remember the video the exposure triangle is your uh, combination of shutter speed your aperture and your ISO if you have not seen the video I'll link it below down in the description so make sure you go in and check that out because it is important to understand the overall exposure triangle uh, before you dive into each individual topics so I would definitely recommend looking at that video and and making sure you understand that this is Asim Gupta with shutter click and hope you're liking my videos hope you are hope you are learning from them uh, that's the whole intent also do check out my blog and my Instagram that is something uh, that I frequently update so so please check it out I'll, I'll leave a link below in the description so going back to the understanding of shutter speed what is shutter speed so first of all shutter speed is a function of your camera every time you're clicking a picture what happens is the shutter within the camera opens and it allows a certain amount of light to come in now that shutter how long that shutter will be open to allow the light to come in is defined by the shutter speed so typically when you are shooting it in manual mode or uh, like aperture or shutter priority mode, you are the one telling the camera that what that shutter speed has to be. You are the one defining and telling the camera how much light you want to allow to come in when you are opening the shutter. Depending on your camera, this shutter speed, you will have a range of shutter speed. For example, I'm using a Nikon D750 and typically that that camera gives you a range of uh, one four thousandth of a second to 30 seconds obviously there are certain more options ahead of that uh, where you can set the camera in bulb mode and everything but let's not get confused with those right now uh, for right now let's consider one four hundredth of a second to 30 30 seconds is your time range is the is the shutter speed range that the camera gives you now this shutter speed range will vary depending on your camera. For example, if you go to a lower end camera or, or a DX camera, uh, these ranges are, are less than what I have on my camera. So depending on your camera, uh, you should know the range of your shutter speed. So what we will do today is, is use one of the toys, the car, and, and, and put it in motion and, and change our shutter speed just to see how that reacts and what changes you see uh, when you take the pictures. So when the car is driving, and your shutter speed is on a faster side uh, you'll see that most of the motion is getting freezed meaning that you can see the whole car but as we go slower and slower on the shutter speed you will see some variations and you'll see how that can that is getting blurred all right so as you can see the camera is ready uh, our prop is ready the car and i'll be using a remote uh, shutters to to click my camera so again i'm on one four hundredth of a second so that's the fastest shutter speed i can get on my camera and let's let's try to shoot this and see what happens so as you can see the car is is really sharp and uh, you don't see any motion blur anything like that so now what we will try to do is increase the speed here okay so, so from a four thousand let's start going more towards maybe 200th of a second and see what happens here i feel still it is sharp enough and gives us it freezes the motion so now from 200th of a second we'll start reducing it other factors are the same meaning your f-stop is at least the same and then ISO is adjusting accordingly. We are at a minimum ISO, so now I'm starting to get higher exposures. So just for this purpose, and you don't have to worry about it, I'll change my f-stop, uh, the aperture as well. So now I'm one-fifth of a second, 
and obviously I had to set my aperture accordingly too but that's not to worry about and then my ISO is 100 as well so that's that's the minimum I can go on my camera so again but what we are concentrating on is on this number right there is the shutter speed and this is one fifth of a second so let's see how that reacts to the to the motion So as you can see now on one fifth of a second I'm getting the complete blur I'm not seeing anything uh, or, or the blur motion of it and not the actual car so so let's take it one more step further and, and, and try to increase the speed slightly and see what happens so let's take it to right there one second okay so let's see what happens when you are at one second now in this in this picture you can see the car has completely disappeared so depending on your application you will be changing the shutter speed for example if you are again trying to freeze the motion something moving really fast your shutter speed has to be faster and that will be more closer to one four four thousandth of a second or whatever you, uh, your camera can give you uh, at the same time if you're looking for blur like for example in these pictures where th there you see some motion blur uh, so you have to adjust accordingly so probably uh, these are taken somewhere close to either one second or, or somewhere close to that one second or two second exposures so uh, those are some of the applications where your shutter speed has to be slightly more uh, and then then obviously there are night photos and and star trails that you do where your exposures are 30 seconds for example while when you do the star trails you want the maximum exposure which is close to about 20 to 30 seconds uh, and then you keep going it's not a, a not a single shot so it's multiple 30 second pictures that you stitch together and create that so uh, so depending on your application your shutter speed becomes very important now the cool trick that I was going to share with you or the bonus tip uh, is the is the motion blur sometimes when you are holding the camera in your hand sometimes what you can do is pan your camera with the with the object moving and keeping that shutter speed slightly lower so let's say for example you set your shutter speed close to maybe around one second and then you pan your camera along with the object moving so what that will do is blur your background completely and then bring out your your subject more promptly and and uh, clearly this sometimes needs trials and errors because not every time you'll be able to pan and get the subject into the into focus so also your aperture becomes important here where uh, you don't want a very low aperture uh, you want it somewhere in between where it will still capture the subject uh, but this is a cool trick where try to keep your shutter speed close to one second and and if the object is moving just pan the camera uh, here are some of the examples that I have uh, where where the the object was moving and then all I did was pan my camera and and captured it so it's a cool effect try it out I'm sure you'll like it uh, let me know what you think about it if you like the content of this video make sure you comment below at the same time if you want me to make some videos on certain topics share those topics please do comment and i'll try to make a video on that topic